Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a recent reads video. So it's been a while um, and I have a bunch of books that I finished out the year with last month and I've never talked about them on the channel before and I wanna quickly wrap them up and then talk to you about the first few books that I've completed in um, the month of January. So let's just get to it. A book that I read after Christmas, I actually received this book for Christmas for my daughter. This is Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. This is a very short novella, about 100 pages long, and it is an allegory. And I can't really tell you what it's about because I would give it away. But suffice it to say, it's about this young woman who is married. She has a perfect marriage. Her husband is perfect. Her home is perfect. Her community is perfect. Everything is perfect. But is it? And this is a very feminist take on a, a very old story and it was brilliant. When I finally clued into what was going on, it was like a light bulb moment and I just loved it. I first heard about this book over on Scott's channel, Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, and uh, I'm so glad that I picked this. I put, asked for this one. I put it on my Christmas list for my daughter because I really enjoyed the read. Also in that week between Christmas and New Year's, I completed this bind up of the first three graphic novels of about Aya. This is Aya, Life in Wap City. This is written by Marguerite Abouet and it is translated, I believe, from the French. Yeah, it was originally published in French. Um, and this is a coming of age story about a young woman who lives in, on the Ivory Coast. And this takes place in the 80s she has these two friends and it's all about their sort of shenanigans that they get up to as these you know coming of age uh with boys and what's going on with school and what's going on with their families all in the backdrop of this country in africa that is you know sort of developing really quickly um there's a lot of uh commercial development going on and their various parents and various people that they know are involved in some of these um commercial activities and how that impacts their life it's really feminist it really is um discussing what options are available for young women in this time and in this place. It's written with a lot of humor. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. And I honestly think that the that my biggest barrier to enjoyment was um, the fact that the text is super tiny. And this, um, I of course had eye surgery recently and I just found this book really, really difficult to read. I had to read it only under certain conditions, certain light levels with my reader glasses on, um, and I still struggled to read the text. I, it's like a handwritten font, and it's not, it's very, very tiny, and it was just really, really difficult for me to read, and that really impacted my enjoyment of this book. I think um, if you don't have any problems with vision, you'll probably have no problems with that, but for me, that really detracted from my enjoyment of this otherwise quite interesting and delightful read. Again, uh, I think I finished this one on New Year's Day. This is a um, middle grade novel in verse. This is Out of the Dust by Karen Hess. And it is, you can see, a novel written in verse. It takes place during um, the Dust Bowl era. This book starts in 1934. It follows a young girl who lives with her mom and her dad in a Midwestern state, um, the dust, you know, the, the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl era have just started. They're very poor. Um, her father is a farmer. Her mom is a homemaker. Uh, she, the young girl, um, is, you know, just starting to learn to play the piano. She seems to have some talent for it. Her mom gets pregnant. There is a tragic accident that happens. I don't want to talk about it in detail. I don't want to spoil it. It reads very quickly. Um, it's very sad, but it has a heartwarming ending at the end. It really does um, give you a great idea of what life was like for poor farmers in the Midwest, in the United States during the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl era. I just thought like the descriptions of the dust and how it would blow into the house and how it covered everything, including the food they were trying to eat and how it was just nonstop and you couldn't get away from it. Um, just unbelievable really so good it was such a good story again a coming of age story um, with tragedy but with a hopeful ending I really enjoyed my time spent with this quick read um, but gives you a nice picture of that period of history 
Then the last book I read in 2020 was a five-star read for me. This is Becky Chambers' To Be Taught, If Fortunate, another science fiction novella. Um, this book is a love letter to science. We follow, we're following four scientists who are on um, a space flight. They've been um, put into basically hibernation. They've been put into stasis for this like 14 year journey. They're traveling to the outer edges of the universe. Um, the humans have figured out how to do long flight uh, space travel without you know having everybody be too old once they get there. And the, these four scientists have been sent to do um, initial explorations of like four planets. And so this basically, you know, we start the book right when the scientists are waking up, they finally reached the area that they needed to go to. Um, and we're following them as they visit each of these planets in turn. And what we delve into like their field work, how they collect samples, their excitement at discovering new places and new, new things, new living beings, um, new life forms, and how they do their work, how they collect their samples, how they analyze those samples. It's just, if you're not a scientist, you may think that sounds boring. It is not boring, I will promise you, it is so good. And it's also about communication and how we communicate with each other, with the people that are near to us and how we communicate with those who are distanced from us, both in time and in space. Um, yeah, some really interesting uh, thoughts here about, you know, what are, what are our, what should we be doing in terms of exploration? What is, you know, what is going too far? What is, um, how much, how far should we take this kind of a thing? And um, what, what do we owe the people that are back home? Um, just a wonderful, wonderful book. I just loved it so much. Like I said, love letter to science. If you have any interest at all, any interest in all, any interest at all in field ecology or how field work is conducted or why people get into field work, um, I think this book is just a delight, absolute delight. And then um, the first book I completed in 2023 was an audio book that I had been working on since December. And that was Glory by No, no Violet Bulawayu, which is a, um, an allegory, right? It's, uh, a, it's all, the main char all the characters in this book are animals. And they are standing in for um, people who live in an African country called Jadada and this African country is based on the real life country of Zimbabwe and it's about the overthrow of the real life dictator Mugabe and um, what happens to the country after that coup and after he is overthrown. So all of these animals, you know, uh, the, the leader is a horse, uh, the military and the police force are dogs, the citizenry are like sheep and d sheep and ducks and goats and you know other kinds of animals, um, and it is written in a very interesting style. It's very repetitive. There are certain phrases that are repeated over and over again, and it really um, has the cadence and the diction of you know propaganda and how certain phrases are repeated by politicians as sort of like. Um, dog whistles to, you know, un subconsciously trigger people to feel certain ways about certain things. Um, and I liked this book, but I didn't love it. I found it to be repetitious at times. I think the audiobook is very well done, um, but maybe a little too long. What sold the book? I stuck with it and I am glad I did because about at the midway point, the tone of the book really shifts. So what is sort of written in a style that is, it's horrible, but it's comical. Sort of we, a story gets told and we understand sort of how this type of environment impacts individuals and the tragedy of that and how like the tragedy gets brought home to us. And because of that, I finally had an emotional connection at that point. The rest of the book worked really well for me. The ending is super powerful. I thought the ending was the best part of the book. Um, so I'm super glad that I stuck with it. I buddy read this with a, a group of women, which was really fantastic, really gave me things to think about um, and made me sort of delve deeper into it than I probably would have 
if I had just read it on my own. And like I said, I may have even given up on it if I had just been reading it on my own. And I'm really glad that I didn't. Um, it is not, I did not like it as much as I liked uh, We Need New Names, which was No Violet Bulawayo's first book. I really, really love that book. Um, but I do think that it is a really well told book. Power um, corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I think that is a generalization um, as an aphor aphorism for a reason. Um, and I think it is something that speaks very directly to the human, to human nature um, in general. So I'm glad I read that one. Uh, another novel I completed in January is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen jo Joy Fowler. Um, I will say this uh, particular edition, which was published by Plume, um, has spoilers in the blurb on the back. So I have spoiled this book when I've talked about it in past videos when it was on my TBR. Um, and I'm really sorry that I did that. But uh, so I will attempt to talk about this book without providing any spoilers. So this is a book about our main character, Rosemary. She is when we first meet her, she is um, causing a ruckus in a cafeteria. <laughs> um, and that is the sort of a good entry point into her sort of chaotic life and personality. Um, although she really tries to like tamp down that side of herself and to really fly under the radar. And so this is, um, you know, as, as a child, she was a real big talker and she's really tried to like suck herself in and like contain herself in her um, young adulthood. And we see why. So we're following this family, Rosemary, her brother Lowell, her sister Fern and her parents um, as Rosemary sort of is remembering her childhood and events that occurred in the family. There, uh, there's something that's happened in this family, and she's sort of repressed things about about what have happened to to this to her family. And in order for her to like sort of forge a life by herself, and she doesn't want to sort of get sucked back in to that um, to that mess that is her family. But uh, memory is is. Uh, a difficult thing, right? Like the, we construct memories um, in our minds a lot of times, and particularly when we're young. And so um, as we go through this book, we realize that, uh, you know, Rosemary may not remember, is not maybe telling us the story chronologically or is maybe not remembering things until later on after she's already told us something. And so it kind of becomes a story where you're a little bit like, wait, wait, what's going on? And then it becomes clear what's happening. And you kind of understand what, why Rosemary is the way that she is. And so this is a family drama. This is a story about loss. This is a story about memory. This is again, a story about communication and how we talk to each other and how, um, how communication in families works and doesn't work. Um, there is, uh, there is quite a bit of harm to animals in this book. So if that's something that is not your your cup of tea, I would avoid this book for sure. I found this a really difficult read. Um, at times, I was not sure if I liked it or not. I like the writing style. I think it's it's written in a very, it flows very easily. And I, I had no problem while I was reading it. But the things that were happening... Um, were very emotionally difficult for me to read. And I was buddy reading this with Britta Bowler and I'm glad that I was because I don't know if I would have, it wasn't because it was a bad book that I would have put it down, but I put, might've put it down just because it was too hard. Um, and I am glad that I read it. I am glad this was a book that was on my ancient TBR and I am glad that I read it. Although I do think it's a book that I could not reread because I mean, this book wrecked me. I would have to stop reading it and put it put it down for the rest of the day and not pick it up until the next day. And it's not a long book at all. But I was just like, like emotionally, I just could not handle the content of this book. So just be forewarned. This is, this is an emotionally difficult book, I think. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about that one. Um, I also finished um, just uh, on Friday, I finished... 
um, Loathe to Love You, which is a collection of three novellas by Allie Hazelwood. These are romance novellas um, set in uh, basically three, our three main female characters are best friends from grad school. They're all in the STEM field, STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and this is the world that Allie Hazelwood writes about, right? Like all of her characters are related to STEM um, and they're, it's, these are contemporary romances. Um, and Allie Hazelwood, I think the difficulty with her is that she's always hitting some some beats that are the same in all of her books. Um, I find them to be potato chip reads. I think if you're feeling under a lot of stress and you find romance a really good stress relief or just a great form of entertainment, I think Allie Hazelwood is great for that. Um, but it, you know, if you read a lot of her stuff all at once, you're going to be uh, really conscious of these sort of literary tics that she has in her writing style. Um, but I think she writes really funny, witty dialogue, which is what I love in romance novels. Her characters are super cute. Um, and they're all like sort of, they're not, I wouldn't say they're good. They're not nice people necessarily, but they're all like trying to do they're trying to be good and they're trying to do good in the world, which I enjoy as well. I would basically compare these to watching sitcoms. If you like to relax in the evening by sitting down and watching a 30 minute sitcom, this is basically that in book form. And I don't watch sitcoms generally anymore, um, but I do like a good, um, amusing, entertaining romance novel, and that's what I find Allie Hazelwood's romance novels to be. So I believe that that is it for what I have completed at the end of December and the beginning of January. Um, I am really glad to get these books wrapped up because they have been sitting on my library cart waiting for me to talk to you about them. Um, I hope there's something in there that you think might be interesting for you. I hope you're all doing well and finding some great books to read. I will talk to you later.